Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be discussing about actual growth. But before we start with actual growth, let's first see what is economic growth, right? Now, economic growth is defined as an increase in your real GDP or an increase in the productive capacity that is the productive potential in the economy. Now, when you're talking about an increase in real GDP, what we're referring is that our actual output is increasing, which means that our actual growth is occurring, right? Because when real GDP is going up, that is what is defined as actual growth. While an increase in productive capacity is defined as potential growth, right? So here within the definition, we can see that there are, when we're talking about economic growth, so we all know economic growth is, you know, it's growth in the economy that is measured in terms of increasing real GDP. But when you're talking about growth, we're talking about two aspects of growth, that is, one in which our actual output is going up and then one in which our potential output is going up. So the point where our actual output is going up, that's known as actual growth, also known as short-term growth or short-run growth, while the increase in potential output is referred to as long-term growth, right? Um, or you can say potential growth. Now, like I said, economic growth is of two types. One is you have short-run economic growth, which is also called the actual growth, and then the long-run economic growth known as the potential growth where the economy is productive potential is actually rising, right? Um, so guys, we need to understand the fact that when we are measuring economic growth, so, you know, we are actually measuring the rate of at which our real GDP is going up. And that's what national income statistics is all about, because these are our national income statistics. And they measure the rate at which, you know, economic growth takes place. And, you know, policymakers are specifically very much interested in these statistics because, you know, the government can enact and they can inform uh, economic policy accordingly. So, for example, if the real GDP is very low, the government can use expansionary demand side policies and vice versa. For example, if, GD if the economy is moving towards the boom and the inflation rate is very high and real GDP is excessively rising beyond... Uh, you know, sustainable capacity or sustainable levels, then the government or the economic policy makers could come up with contractionary demand side policies, right? So guys, when we're talking about short run growth, we need to understand that short run growth, also known as actual growth, comes arises because of two factors or two reasons, you can say. These are two reasons why actual growth arises or occurs because of number one, an increase in aggregate demand in the economy or an increase in your short run aggregate supply in the economy, right? Now, when you're talking about short run growth, we know that short-run growth is the rise in real GDP. And remember that short-run growth always happens within the phase of the business cycle. So if, for example, you say that your real GDP is going up, that's actually happening within the phase of the business cycle, the economic cycle, right? So let's say if our country, Pakistan, let's say, is recovering from a recession, right? And if the economy is recovering from a recession, then our real GDP is going up. So that's what actual growth is all about. And probably that could be happening because, you know, our aggregate demand is going up and that is causing our economy to recover from that recession. And because of that recovery from the recession in the economic cycle, in the recovery phase, we are in the, the economy is in a recovery phase, you know, and because of that, the aggregate demand is going up and that increase in real GDP is known as actual growth, right? But it's also known as short-run economic growth because, you know, the economic cycle constantly fluctuates and we know that these business cycles occurs. And because of these business cycles that occur in the economy, the actual output is away or different from potential output that causes these output gaps to occur. Either there could be positive output gaps or negative output gaps, right? So guys, when there is short-run growth, it means that economy was, you know, previously operating below full capacity, right? So if you're saying that there is actual growth happening in the economy, or you could also say, guys, whenever there's room for actual growth, right? When there's room for actual growth or actual growth is actually happening, it means that the economy was previously, right? Remember that previously operating below, I it here, <clears throat> it was operating below capacity. So if the economy was operating below capacity, then there is always room for actual growth to happen. And remember that short and because of that short run growth or actual growth, it leads to an increase in capacity utilization. So there would be an increase in, I'll write it down, capacity utilization. So because your AD is going up, let's say. So hence, a fall, and because of that actual growth, there would be a fall in the amount of spare capacity. And it would also result into a fall in your unemployment, especially demand deficit or cyclical unemployment would go down because of your, your AD is going up. And there's more capacity utilization taking place. And you know, if, you're, if you want to show this or represent this on a diagram, so you could also represent this, apart from the ADAS analysis, I want to tell you guys that you could actually show this on a macro PPC where you uh, label consumer and capital goods. Now, 
you know when you're labeling a macro ppc or a ppc by the way when you say macro ppc you're actually representing the productive capacity or the potential of the entire economy and that's the best that you use so on the axis it's best that you use a you know consumer and capital because these are the only type of two goods that are produced in the economy if and that's the reference that you should actually make when you're drawing a macro ppc in your ad in your uh, macro um, essay questions in section c let's say so guys actual growth on a macro ppc would be represented by a movement from inside the ppc to towards the ppc so let's say from you know point a to point b or it could be also be a movement from point B to point C. So it's telling us that initially we were inside the BPC, so there was underutilization of resources and there was idle capacity and spare capacity in the economy and resources that is land, labor, capital was underutilized. And now that spare capacity, or you can say that slack in the economy is actually being utilized. So that is why I said that there's capacity utilization when actual growth takes place, right? And at point C, you know, it represents that uh, all your resources have been fully utilized. So there's full employment of resources. There's full employment of resources on point C. But the but the journey from A to C, right, is the act is the journey of that actual growth where real GDP is rising, and there's room for um, you know growth to take place because you still have that um, idle resources or slack available to to you know existing firms can can satisfy that increase in aggregate uh, demand or increase in aggregate spending that is taking place for you know any reason also guys before i jump on to the adas diagram i also want to tell you guys that actual growth can also occur because of a rise in short-run aggregate supply so for example if your short-run aggregate supply rises it shifts to the right now i haven't made that diagram right now but i'm assuming that you guys know that diagram so if the short-run aggregate supply shifts to the right it could be because of a positive supply shock and you we, we all know when a positive supply shock occurs a positive supply shock a positive supply shock occurs when the aggregate supply that is your short run aggregate supply shifts outwards and the, the reason why it shifts outwards is that the cost in the economy goes down maybe you know there's a fall in raw material cost or maybe there's a you know um, wages are falling the wage cost is going down the raw material prices are going down or maybe the indirect taxes are going down or falling minimum wages so whatever reason the positive supply shock will result in an outward shift in your short run aggregate supply resulting into the profitability of, of the firms to go up and hence they would produce more output so the output of the industries would go up and definitely this increase in real gdp is also actual growth now guys coming to the diagram of the adas model where i've shown a keynesian aggregate supply curve because i feel personally feel you can by the way show on a classical adas diagram as well but i personally would favor keynesian aggregate supply diagram because here you can also talk about the slack and the spare capacity right so guys what you can see from this diagram is that initially our real gdp was at y1 right at let's say the point where ad1 was intersecting the aggregate supply at y1 so this was a real gdp and we can see that you know the full employment level of output is yfe and y1 is quite away far away from yfe and that is showing a negative output gap it's showing a recessionary gap it's showing a deflationary gap where the economy is quite away from full employment possibly in a recession as well right and the increase in aggregate demand, maybe due to a rise in consumer spending or government spending, or maybe due to a rise in exports, would shift the AD2 outwards from AD1 to AD2, causing a real GDP to actually go up from Y1 to Y2. And this increase in real GDP from Y1 to Y2 is actually known as actual growth. This is the actual growth in the economy. This is where firms are enjoying the increase in real GDP by utilizing those existing resources that were previously idle. And this sort of closes the negative output gap and the economy enjoys that phase where more and more output is produced using the existing resources, whatever available resources previously unutilized the economy has. And the firms would see that their profits are going up and there's more employment uh, in the economy also happening and incomes would rise. And that's how the economy sort of recovers from a recession again you could talk about the fact that you know from ad2 if there's a further rise a further positive demand shock these are positive demand shocks in the economy so if there's a positive demand shock in the economy from ad2 to ad3 again you see that your negative output gap actually closes here because the jump from y2 to yfe is representing the closure of the negative output gap and now your economy reaches 
the full employment level of output. Now this full employment level of output is representing that a further increase in aggregate demand would not result into any further rise in real GDP because now all your resources have been fully exhausted. So this point C over here guys is actually corresponding with the point C on the macro PPC because on the macro PPC as well you're on the production possibility curve which is representing that you have uh, fully utilized your capacity or your idle resources right so these two points are actually corresponding with each other so guys let's now move on to the factors that will cause an actual growth to take place or a rise in short-term growth so basically the first factor that we have is that a cut in interest rates will definitely lead to a rise in actual growth and how is that so i want you to please focus on the analysis that i'm going to make here so so you have actually three to four points that you could explain how a rise in interest rates, how a cut in interest rates, sorry, could actually boost actual growth. And the reason is that first what you could write is that a cut in interest rates will reduce the cost of borrowing. So obviously if interest rates goes down, the cost of borrowing for consumers will go down and this will obviously make it cheaper for consumers to borrow. And uh, what will happen is that if it becomes cheaper for consumers to borrow, so they will borrow more, which will allow them to spend more on items such as houses, cars, furniture, on let's say, needs and wants and etc and etc so what's going to happen is that this will increase the consumption um, component in the ad equation which will shift the aggregate demand from 81 to the right 81 to 82 to the right and we know that when ad rises your actual growth takes place your short-term growth takes place right next what you could talk about is that a cut in interest rates would basically reduce the rate of return on savings right so we know that the rate of return the rate of return on the savings would go down as well because your as your interest rates are going down you will earn less return on your deposits and this will reduce the incentive to save in the economy and instead the incentive to spend or borrow will go up right and as a consequence what's going to happen is that the saving ratio in the economy guys would go down and when the saving ratio goes down so consumers would prefer to spend more so they'll so our consumer spending would instead rise and again this is going to increase the consumption so this is another way you could explain it, it as well i would suggest that you explain lane through this point as well apart from just the cost of borrowing point because just don't write that a fall in interest rates or a cut in interest rates is going to increase your real gdp or will cause economic growth without actually explaining the chain of analysis right what you could also write is that a cut in interest rate is going to reduce the monthly payments is going to reduce the monthly payments especially for those uh, you know, uh, who have variable rates of mortgages. Now, mortgage is a house loan. So, so people who are actually paying variable mortgage rates on a monthly basis, let's say, they will feel that, you know, they have more money to spend now since they are now paying less interest, right? Less variable rate of interest. So basically what's going to happen is that since they'll feel that, you know, they have more money to spend now, their marginal propensity to consume will actually go up which is going to boost the consumption in the economy again shifting the aggregate demand from 81 to 82 increasing aggregate demand basically what you guys you could also mention in the in this point is that when the interest rates goes down we know the, for the fact that when interest rates goes down you know it will result into hot money outflows so hot money outflows will take place and you know people um, overseas uh, firms and residents who had deposited their money into our domestic bank accounts, they'll withdraw their deposits and, you know, take it back to probably some another country that is offering them a high, relatively high rate of interest, right? And what this will do is that it is going to, since they will withdraw their money and, um, in, you know, deposit it somewhere else in some another country, it is going to increase the supply of our domestic currency. This is because they had deposited the money into the domestic banks in the local currency of the country. But since they are withdrawing it, so they'll convert it back now. And this is going to increase the supply of the domestic currency. And when the supply of the domestic currency goes up, we know that when the supply of the currency goes up, C for the currency, it's, it's going to weaken the exchange rate. It's going to depreciate the currency, right? And what happens is that your exchange rate weakens. Your um, And when your exchange rate weakens, we know that the effect of a depreciation or a weakening of the exchange rate is that the price of your exports go down artificially. So it's, so, and when the price of exports go down, assuming that exports are elastic, the PD for exports is elastic, the quantity demanded for exports will go up and export revenues will go up. And export revenues will go up, what's gonna happen is that your exports are now increasing in terms of more more export revenues and export is a component of ad hence again it is going to boost the ad so we see how the interest so, uh, so at 
in exams what happens is that students only mention that you know when the interest rate goes down the cost of borrowing goes down and consumers borrow more and then c rises but you could also talk about the fact that a fall in interest rates could also have an impact subsequent impact on exports because it will result into hot money outflows that depreciates the currency or weakens the exchange rate and that makes your exports you know um, the price of exports to go down artificially and that causes a rise in export revenues and hence boosting ad and hence boosting economic growth that is actual growth to take place or short run growth to place, take place basically also what you could mention is that a cut in interest rates is also going to affect the firms because it is also going to reduce the cost of borrowing for firms as well enabling them to you know borrow more and hence you know the marginal propensity for firms to invest is going to go up right now being an as student you don't necessarily need to write the word about you don't need to use the word marginal propensity of for firms to invest but if you, even if you use it it's okay so since the marginal propensity for firms to invest will go up it again is going to increase the i component which is the investment component of aggregate demand so the investment spending would go up since firms will invest more now and hence again it's going to boost the ad hence causing a short run economic growth to take place hence causing actual growth to take place again stimulating the economy probably out of recession and closing the negative output gap that existed okay so the second point that you could write is that the government could actually reduce the income tax or there's another way of saying it as well that the government could reduce the marginal rate of income tax for those who are in lower income tax bands that is they could reduce the marginal income tax rates for those people who are on lower income tax bands because we know that especially reducing the marginal rate of income tax for those people would immediately boost consumption since lower income groups have a higher marginal propensity to consume right or you could also say that the government could increase the income tax free allowance and what this would do is that this would leave people with more disposable incomes especially for those people who are in lower income groups and you know consume we know that these poor people like i said they have a higher marginal propensity to consume so consumption would increase in the economy shifting the ad from 81 to 82 the second point that you could say is in says the third point is that you could say that the level of corporation tax government could actually reduce the level of corporation tax corporation taxes are taxes on business profits right and what this will do is that this is going to increase the retained profits for businesses and which will make it easier for them to finance the investments so or you could also so so the investment would go up or instead of saying investment could go up you could also say that the marginal propensity to invest would go up right and as investments go up your aggregate demand will increase too and you know since investment spending is a component of ad right so yeah ad would again increase in the economy boosting economic growth increasing economic growth causing short run growth to rise right your real gdp would go up another point that you can write is that the government could actually increase the government spending they could boost their government spending in the economy for example you could say that government spending on infrastructure would go up on education on healthcare maybe public sector wages go up in the economy because we know that government spending that is g is a core component of aggregate demand and this will significant this will have a significant effect on on aggregate demand increasing aggregate demand right and remember that since like i said that government spending is a core component of ad um and like i said this will have a significant impact and the way it will have a significant impact is that as government spends more money in the economy it generates a large multiplier effect a huge multiplier effect in the economy where initially a, a small rise in government spending or a initial increase in spending will uh, create a multiplied rise in national income it will increase incomes in the economy that will facilitate further rounds of spending in the economy so you know as government spending goes up that creates that causes incomes to rise and you know like i said work employment goes up as well these workers are workers in the morning but they are consumers in the evening so ultimately your consumption will go, will go up as well the the businesses or the firms to whom the government would have given contracts to construct these you know probably schools or hospitals or you know if the government is spending money on infrastructure the profits for these construction companies would go up as well which will help them finance more investment so like i said again this is correlating with the same point that i said that this will generate incomes in the economy which will facilitate further rounds of spending and aggregate demand is spending in the economy right so just by us by an initial increase in g you know it it had a ripple or a spillover effect on your consumption on your subsequent investments as well right so it's facilitating further rounds of spending and income generation in the economy and the end result is 
that will even create a bigger or a huge increase or a greater final increase in the aggregate demand right further boosting your economic growth in the economy the last point that you could talk about is that you maybe you know the government could we we could weaken the exchange rate or depreciate the exchange i mean if if the government um, purposely does it then it's known as a devaluation otherwise if if left to the market forces then we use the word depreciation so if the exchange rate is weakened right for for whatever reason maybe it on its own depreciates or devalues what would happen is that first of all the government could let's say maybe depreciate the devalue the exchange rate by reducing the interest rate which will create hot money outflows or maybe the government sort of sells domestic currency reserves and buys foreign currency so that will increase the supply of domestic currency again weakening the exchange rate but what's going to happen is that if the exchange rate weakens it will make the exports cheaper right so when your exports become cheaper and it will also make your exports expen so imports expensive so the price of exports will go down while the price of imports will go up and we know that economic theory suggests this is the way you actually write in the exam that you know economic theory suggests that the demand for imports and therefore the expenditure on imports will fall because the price of imports have gone up whereas the demand for exports will go up and therefore the revenue generated by exports will go up as well so export revenues will rise and both the impact is that we know that x minus m that is your net exports this is actually referring to net export revenues which is import ex export revenues minus import expenditures so both will lead to an improvement in the trade balance of the current account and probably reduce the current account deficit or maybe move towards the surplus and we know that net exports is a component of ad so aggregate demand will increase from ad1 to ad2 so these are all the factors you could also like i said at the start of the video you could also talk about talk about the fact that maybe actual growth could also occur due to a rise in the short run aggregate supply curve right and we know that short run aggregate supply is a positive supply shock and that occurs because of a fall in raw material cost of maybe the government you know give subsidies to key industries or decline in oil prices the global oil prices world oil prices you know you could talk on those lines as well so yeah that also causes actual growth so this is all guys for actual growth i hope you enjoyed the video i'll see you all around in the next video where we discuss the long run causes of economic growth we we will discuss what potential growth is and what are the long run causes of economic growth see you in that video till then take care